Hi, it's January 16th, 2019. I just wanted to pop in really quick and thank everybody who watched my last video and left comments. I'm so humbled and overwhelmed by the response and surprised. And I find it extremely encouraging. And what I find even more encouraging is in the last month, I can't even keep up with people's new videos and that's awesome because it shows that people are taking back their power and sharing their story and telling the truth and they're not afraid. And so if you're on the fence feeling like you feel this inner push, like you want to share your story, do it. It's cathartic. And this, this thing happens. A few people commented in my last video, like, how do you stay so positive? Or, or why do you look so positive? And I am positive now. People who knew me years ago, like I had the, <laughs> I had the label Debbie Downer, you know, from like SNL. I was the person, no matter what the setting was, I could rattle off a negative news story or a, a sad statistic or whatever. And just, I was Debbie Downer. And I'm not anymore and it's a fun way to live life not being Debbie Downer <clears throat> and and I think part of why I'm not is because I've told my story to anybody who will listen I've told it so many times that it's lost its charge like it doesn't have the emotional charge to it anymore it's like you know when you have a favorite song and you start out and you just love you'll play it like 50 times a day <laughs> And then after maybe a month, you're like, you still like the song, but you don't need to listen to it more than once a week. Well, that's kind of how I feel about my story. I'm happy to share it and I wanted to put it out on that video, but it doesn't have the charge for any, for, for me anymore. And so just tell your story and it'll slowly but surely begin to lose its charge, even trauma. Um, I believe that is the case. But I wanted to pop in really quick and specifically talk about this dog. <laughs> this is Ruby and this is Nilla and they were the stars of my last video. I They're very calming to me. But Ruby has mast cell cancer, mast cell tumor and we're going to get it removed on Friday and so please if you will just send some positive vibes and prayers our way for my dog on Friday I would really appreciate it. But uh, it reminded me of how when something like a tumor or pain manifests itself in our lives, it really is there to call us to action. And it can be easier to just ignore it and sweep it under the rug, but eventually it's going to need to be addressed. And and I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, in regards to, to pain that we experienced when we were in the organization. And for years and years and years, we were just told to sweep it under the rug, uh, remember that it's about the organization and not you as the individual. And what's so exciting to see now, Ruby, no, she wears this diaper because she always wants to gnaw at her tumor and it's gross, but we're gonna get it taken care of on Friday. So what I was saying is, <clears throat> your story is important and it's valuable and there's this documentary that I love to watch and refer people to. It's called What Babies Want and it's about how even when you observe brand new babies, they come out wanting to tell their story, like their, their birth journey, they'll reenact their birth journey um, through their body language and then you see it in toddlers and small children like that's what we're here to do with each other just share our stories and the more we can do that with the goal of understanding each other rather than trying to convert someone to a specific belief system <laughs> oh my dogs are cute when we when we talk to each other with the goal of just understanding each other and not about being right or winning the argument, although sometimes that feels good too, um, that's when that's when 
the love happens and that's what life is all about. So I just wanted to share a really quick illustration because when I first heard this illustration in a, in a kingdom hall, uh, in 2000, I was like, it really resonated with me. And I think it's important for me, especially when looking at people who are still inside and very content inside the organization, it's a good reminder for me as to why they're content. And no matter what I share with them, it's not going to convince them to like, it's not my goal to make Jehovah's Witnesses not attend the Kingdom Hall. That's not my goal. My goal is to help people see that, um, what is my goal? My goal is for everybody to just have self-expression and freedom and to not be controlled and manipulated by the man behind the curtain. Like this is the Wizard of Oz and Toto has pulled the curtain to the side and there is no wizard. So this was the illustration I wanted to share really quick and then I'm gonna go and keep this really short. Oh, and before I do that, um, there's this website, it's called Berean Pickets and I'll post the link in the description below. But the reason why I really wanted to share it is because I know several people with whom I've shared this um, website with personally that it was those videos that woke them up. And um, the, the man who makes the videos is not interested in converting and uh, or deconverting. He's just very logical and I, and I love his videos and they're balanced and they're not manipulative and I hope you enjoy them because I know that they personally worked for someone who is extremely dear to my heart. <clears throat> so here's the illustration. Once upon a time there were two donkeys. Um, one donkey had a pack of sugar on his back and the other donkey had a big sack of cotton on his back. So they're going along their path and it's a hot day and the donkey with the sack of sugar is really struggling because it's heavy and sticky and uncomfortable and it's a pain. Whereas the donkey with the cotton is skipping circles around his sugar donkey friend and life is easy and fine. So they continue like this and they come to a river and the, the donkey with the sugar goes through the river and all the sugar dissolves off of his back through the sack into the water and he comes out on the other side and his fatigued muscles are renewed and he feels like he can fly because he has no weight and he's had all this time to um, build his muscle. <laughs> Whereas the donkey with the cotton walks through the river and can barely get out on the other side because he wasn't used to having any burden on his back. So the moral of the story for me is I'm thankful for the, the sack of sugar I carried for the first three and a half decades of my life because after having gone through the river, learning, I mean in my specific scenario, learning that the organization that I thought was the truth is just another religion um, with good people and bad people but coming out on the other side, no longer having to judge people, no longer having to live life through the lens of us versus them, coming out on the other side, being able to listen from a space of nothing versus a space of judgment and pre-rehearsed answers. Like it's just been so freeing and life is an adventure. But I look back and I see a lot of my my friends, I don't know if they'd call me their friend, I, I still love them, but I look back and I see Jehovah's Witnesses who are like that donkey with the cotton and life is good for them in the organization. They have their social circle, um, they have their status, they have their little rehearsed presentations and they have their routines and their schedule and life is, is predictable. Um, everybody's going to go through that river at whatever point in their life. And I just want to be there for the cotton donkeys who come out on the other side, like what is going on. And so that's what I'm about, but I'm about a lot of other stuff than just Watchtower world. And that's the main reason why I'm not going to make a lot of videos, but I appreciate people who have made 
who sacrifice so much of their time and make really excellent videos that are teaching videos like um, Bethany with Stop the Shunning. Really solid advice, especially when it comes to things like self-care and her husband who picks apart um, watch our, Watchtower art, study articles in a very logical, um, matter-of-fact, respectful uh, presentation. Ultimate Mordecai, I love your videos because they're just always very uplifting. Berean Pickett's, I already mentioned that. It's just um, so logical. And of course, I uh, really am appreciative for uh, the videos that JW Survey, like Lloyd Evans, that you put out and all, all of the time you put into very honest journalism. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to make this into like a thank you for your videos segment, but there are so many resources out there for us. And what that shows me is, wow, I always felt as a Jehovah's Witness that people didn't love me, but now looking like people love us, um, all of us, like I said, it's not us versus them, but especially when it comes to resources available for those who are in the organization and want to begin actually doing um, real research, um, there are so many awesome tools out there. Oh, and laughter is the best medicine. And if you haven't checked out the videos on goat-like personality, he's a former Bethelite in Norway, I think. I don't know, his videos just make me laugh so much. So thank you for the laughter. And I'm just hoping, <laughs> my dogs, um, that we have a successful surgery on Friday. And I look forward to, I have a couple ideas for future videos, um, but yeah. That's, that's all for now. Have a great day. Bye.